Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Mary Ellen, this is She Sews Happiness, and this is my Sunday Sews, which is a weekly catch up of what I've been doing and how I've been getting on with all things stitching related. So today I suppose I'll be talking a little bit about sewing for curves, um, the, the challenges that that can present for us at times, and sharing with you my successes and my failures. I think it's a pretty even standard this week. So I started off really well. I had shown you last Sunday that I cut out and made a slight start on a Tilly in the Buttons Pearl cardigan and absolutely love it. I'm gonna pop in a picture. I made it in this vibrant lipstick red and I wear them rather than cardigans, I'm wearing these just as tops, little wrap over tops. And I absolutely love this. So this was a cotton jersey that I had purchased from Jenny Stitches Fabrics. And I really, really am enamored with the pearl cardigan. Now, Tilly and the Buttons patterns were something I tried out when I was first starting, and I never really fell in love with them. I think that was down to the fact that they really weren't very well drafted for curvier bodies. And while I did fit into the range, I just didn't love the fit of them. And I know that I'm supposed to make adjustments, but it just seemed like the starting point was pretty poor so I never really fell in love with them. This is the first time I ever tried their curve range and uh, yeah totally different thing entirely. So what I have discovered uh, myself in my own sewing is that there are two very different kinds of curve blocks. Um, there is one that fits the problem and fixes everything. There is another which really just accentuates the problems because I don't think they're all equally drafted. Now, I think Tilly and the Buttons have got the curve range pretty well. Um, it does kind of answer a lot of the problems that I personally experienced with shoulders, busts, length, etc. But others just don't make any sense to me at all. Um, and I'm one of these people that does tend to fit within both size ranges. So it really is... Um, having to try both of them to see what actually works best for your body and then making your adjustments from there. I know the By Hand London extended sizes are dire for me. Um, I'm gonna stick to the original size range. I think it goes up to a size 20. Um, and I'm usually a size 16 in theirs, which of course I can wear if I use their other range as well. But I, I have discovered um, that it just doesn't work for me. I think to accommodate curves, what they've done is actually make the block bigger everywhere. And we all know as curvy women that that's not necessarily the answer. Um, you know, you just have certain areas that need to be made uh, more accommodating and not necessarily your entire frame. And I never really got on well with their curve range at all. Um, so yeah, I'll be sticking to the original size range for that. Megan Nielsen is another one where I actually get more success with the original sizes and grading out for the bust and things like that and doing my full bust adjustment. That just works better for me, but Tilly the Buttons is brilliant. But I've discovered as well that, yeah, anything that is graded in a, in a B cup really isn't intended for curves. So after the first couple of days making my lovely pearl cardigan and being really happy with it, then I was off work. So on Wednesday, I decided to settle down and work on my pattern testing. I'd finished my Jennifer Lauren handmade pattern test and absolutely love it. Can't wait to share that with you properly when the pattern is released. But then I turned my attention, as I say, to the other pattern test that I was working on, and that was the Stitch Witch Pattern Capulet Dress. Now, I fell in love with this dress the moment I saw it. The whole aesthetic, the whole feel, the whole vibe is just so up my street. However, what I have discovered in the process of trying to pattern test is that it really just does not work for me at all. So the pattern is drafted for a B cup. Um, now, I've got a six inches difference between my high bust and my full bust. So I do need to make quite dramatic full bust adjustments whenever I'm changing my patterns. So oh, I have them here, I haven't thrown them out yet. They're, they're going in the bin. Um, so I started off, so with the um, Capulet dress, basically you have two rectangular pieces, one for your front bodice, one for your back bodice. There are no sleeves because the sleeves are add-ons, there's no shoulders or anything like that. So automatically I was at a disadvantage whenever I first started thinking how on earth am I even going to do a full bust adjustment on this but what I did was I just literally extend it through the waist start there is literally only a waist start I added in a bust start um, but by adding in a bust start 
what I discovered was because the piece that I am working with requires such a dramatic increase so I ended up with something like this so you can see that the sizes do dramatically change automatically just by adding the space in there for the bust and really what it did as well was it messed up the length it messed up the neckline I mean the neckline was going off at an angle about 45 degrees um, so the whole thing basically and then I tried it again the whole thing basically would need redraft it and I chatted to my friend Lisa who's a dressmaking teacher and she kind of reassured me that it wasn't me that actually yeah in that style of dress um, when you've got you know quite a lot of fluctuousness there's going to be serious problems and really what I would need is for that pattern piece to have been drafted a D cup to give to give me the hopes of actually creating um, a piece that fitted me by doing a full bust adjustment and unfortunately it is only graded at a B cup. Um, now what it would need I assume is that that bustier which is basically what it is would need to be what would need really to be transposed and it would need to be created in princess seams. Now I'm okay with basic adjustments. I don't have drafting experience. I don't have a clue where to start redrafting a pattern. Um, I have no idea. Although it's now going on my list of things to do, how to take ordinary darts and convert those into princess seams. Um, might be worth looking into, but we'll see. There are other patterns that I can make that don't require that much effort. So I was really disappointed because I did spend a whole day and then half a day trying to figure that out and just had absolutely no hope at all and I'm a little bit annoyed because I absolutely love that pattern and it is honestly just so tied into my own aesthetic that I really wanted to make it but it wasn't to happen so then I decided um, on Thursday evening to start a new pattern and I had a lovely um, stretched a card fabric that I had been gifted by Minerva as part of their brand ambassador program and I had chosen it thinking I would make um, a stanwick skirt. Now I know what you're thinking, stretch fabric, stanwick skirt, stretch fabric, you know, <laughs> I know it's a bit absurd but really all I would have had to have done in my head was to stabilise the fabric for the waistband in such a way that it wouldn't stretch and just make it as per normal because actually there was a lot of stability in this fabric. It didn't stretch an awful lot unless forced to do so. And yeah, I I worked on the premise that being a stretch fabric, it would be at least 56 inches, probably 60 inches and got three meters of it. But I discovered it was actually very narrow and I think it came to about 46 inches. So there wasn't enough there to accommodate my Stanwick skirt. And I ended up then instead digging through the pattern archive and I discovered a pattern that I had bought and printed like well over a year ago, the Seamwork Brooklyn skirt. And I was like, oh, I totally forgot I had that. So I decided to make that instead. And I set out with the same premise that I would stabilize the waistband. I interfaced it twice um, and I cut a size smaller to allow for any stretch that would happen in the waistband and got to work really simple pattern, really beautiful pattern actually and I'll pop a picture in for you here so you can see it. So it's just a half circle skirt which has quite a dramatic box plate at the front which gives it a lovely shape and just then an invisible zip and a waistband. So I mean how hard could it be? Okay basically that was like one of the first things I ever made when I started sewing so I thought it couldn't possibly go wrong. Well and that's what I get for being cocky. So I sewed it up and before I actually put in the zipper I did a check to make sure that it fitted and it fitted perfectly at the waistband okay. So my premise was technically correct. It worked as I thought it was going to work until I followed the instructions and after inserting my invisible zip I top stitched around the entire waistband. Well big mistake. So in doing so, the fabric was stretched in spite of the double interfacing that was in there to stabilize it. And when I tried it on, I discovered that once the zip was done up, the skirt just fell off. Oops. So yeah, 
epic failure for me in that regard. Uh, so what I really had to do then was face the reality that either I was going to have to write this off as a total failure or I was going to have to unpick the entire thing and try to salvage it. So what did I do? I put it in the highest heat highest heat of a wash that I could get in the washing machine and I put it in the tumble dryer. Desperate times. I have never really had to sit and unpick anything, okay? So my seam ripper has literally only really been used to open buttonholes in the past. And I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to get to know it this intimately. So yeah, I did that. And you know, it's like, oh, it's bound, it's bound to shrink it a bit. No it maybe shrunk about half an inch. That was it. So, pep talk, seam ripper, I unpicked the entire thing and let me tell you, it was no mean feat because the fabric had a kind of sponginess to it. So <laughs> the threads pretty much just melted into the fabric. And of course, black on black, it really wasn't easy to unpick, but I did, I persevered. I'm really darn stubborn. So if I have an idea in my head, if I say I'm gonna do something, I don't quit, I do it. So I unpicked the entire thing, pressed all of the pieces as best as I could and set about cutting them again, a couple of sizes smaller. So actually I've downsized three sizes to make this skirt. So I constructed the skirt again, and actually, do you know what? The construction takes about 15 minutes. It is the simplest pattern I have ever encountered. Um, and then I got to the waistband and where it says top stitch around the whole waistband to hold it in place, no. I literally pressed my waistband in half, got the seam allowance, and then I hand stitched that entire waistband and it fitted like a glove. So failure to success, but oh my gosh, how much time did I spend in the making of what literally was something that should have taken no more than half an hour to sew. Yeah. So after that, I decided I really needed something enjoyable to make. By this point, you know, it's Saturday. Um, well, actually, no. Friday night, right? It's Friday night. And I decide to go through my stash and my patterns and find something that will just make me feel better again. Because failure, even whenever you make something good out of it, never leaves you feeling great about the thing you love, right? But also after the travesty that was trying to fit this bustier pattern piece um, to my bust, I wanted something that would kind of atone. So I turned to the answer, Kashmirat. And yeah, so the, the Alcott dress I've made now twice before. I absolutely love this. It was a pattern that I bought a long time ago. Basically when I was starting out and I discovered, oh my goodness, there's a pattern company that is geared towards curvy bodies. And I bought a few of their patterns and then never made them because I never liked the look of the patterns on the sleeves or on the photos on the website. I think I've mentioned this before. I always kind of thought they were really mumsy looking, but I thought, you know, um, it was New Year. I, I thought I'd give it a go. I had a plain gold shiny fabric and I needed a really plain pattern to kind of accentuate the beauty of the fabric that I bought. And I'll pop a picture in for you to see it. It was a fabric that I'd got from New Craft House and I just wanted it to pop rather than a really complicated frilly dress or anything like that. So this came to play and I was totally, totally blown away by the ease of the fit and also the finished product, which when paired with the fabrics I love, created a garment I adored. Um, so it, gone, it has gone from being something that I felt was a real mumsy garment to something I think is actually quite sexy. There's 
just enough cleavage to make it really, really fumpy if you want to, um, and also enough modesty at the same time because the way in which it is constructed is you actually are sewing elastic into the seams of that neckline to stabilize it so it never stretches out or anything like that. Sorry, I've been to the hairdressers and I can feel a couple of little hairs and that's what I'm scratching at. <laughs> They're just tickling me. So yeah, this I absolutely love. So here you see behind me, another all cut dress and I'm feeling absolutely restored again. I was actually despairing a little bit and I was feeling, I suppose, despondent that nothing was going according to plan, effortless, like an hour and a half and we are done. So yeah, I'm going to go and take some pictures of that dress. So when I'm editing this video, I'll be popping a few of those in. I am a convert to cashmere I do need to try a couple more of their patterns. The Upton is on the list to make and also the Rose Claire, which looks absolutely beautiful and perfect for summer. And I can't wait to get my hands on that and make possibly a couple of linen summer dresses um, after twalling them, of course. So yes, definitely one that I would recommend. It's a very simple style, you know, but sometimes that works just as well. I mean, this dress that I'm wearing is very simple. Um, so this is a silver pattern. It's the penny dress and it's just a basic shirt dress no flares nothing too fancy about it but really comfy and really easy to wear and no full bust adjustment was needed because of the ease that's actually built into this pattern and the way in which it's shaped so also a success i i know a full bust adjustment is something i do so frequently that i shouldn't have to think about it but it does still annoy me every time i have to do it and that was another bonus of the Jennifer Lauren handmade pattern that I was pattern testing. Um, the curve range, which is what I opted to test, uh, was amazing because it went from a size D to an F cap. And when I was chatting to Jen, whenever I was signing up for this, she actually thought I might need to add an inch in to the F cap to make it fit me comfortably. But I didn't and when I twirled it I discovered it was perfect just as it was and yeah I think she's done an amazing job of extending her patterns and creating the curve range. Um, it is an example of curve done right in my opinion um, because it focuses on the main areas where you have the curves so the hips and you know the bust and things like that rather than the overall frame um, which I think is what By Hand London has done. It's just is expanded the whole frame rather than just those key areas where we do have our curves. So yeah, tummy, hips and boobs. Yeah, absolutely astounded by the changes that she's made because I did used to have a bit of trouble fitting the bust and Jennifer Lauren patterns. Um, because when you make a full bust adjustment to a pattern, you're not only changing um, that one area, you're changing the shoulders, you're changing the arm size, you're changing a lot of different things. And then there's always three or four little things that you have to do to kind of compensate for that space that you're building into the pattern. But she has done an amazing job. So that's where I've got so far. Now, what else have I been up to? Because that's actually all the garment sewing I've done. And given the problems that I came up against, I'm actually quite happy that I've achieved this much. And I do have wearable garments, even when they went a little bit wrong. So yeah, I've got my Tilly in the Buttons Pearl. I finished off my Jennifer Lauren Handmade Tester, and I do love it, I can't wait to share it with you. I gave up on my Capulet dress, and I'm really, I'm not gonna get over that. I'm really upset about that one. I made my Seymour Brooklyn, got there in the end, and I've made my Cashmerat all cut dress. But at the same time, I've been doing a little bit of, of my cross stitch projects. So you can see here, and I do share these, I do my unboxing videos for my cotton and twine subscription boxes. So this is what I'm currently working on here. It's a little design with a little squirrel, and that's to make a biscornu. So I'll share that with you whenever I'm finished. I'm hoping to get a wee bit of that done later on tonight. And then one of the other things I've got, so the sister company of Cotton and Twine, the historical sampler company, have a spring stitch along going at the moment. So I've been working on that and I've got the first quarter of that design finished as well. So I've been absolutely loving it. And that's the thing, I do love my sewing, but I also love to meddle in other crafts as well. And on that note, I want to show you what arrived today and I'm really excited about this. I'm hoping to 
get to them before the Easter holidays, but if I don't, it's something to do during the Easter holidays. So the first thing that I got, and I have opened it already, but this is the little pattern sleeve. So it's from Makebox and Co. And this is the Royal Bunny doll making box. So this I think has been brought out especially to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee. And yeah, it's an absolutely beautiful little bunny. Um, it's made of linen. I think there's linen in the pack and then all the little pieces of fabric that you need to create a little outfit. And it has this gorgeous little golden crown and everything. I just thought it was super cute. So I had to get myself one of these. Um, so I'll give you, whoops, there's my glass. I'll give you a wee look. So inside my box, okay, the first thing you'll see is um, Make Box and Co's certificate. So once I make that, I mean, if I decided to gift that, I have a three-year-old niece who'd absolutely love this. There's just a part of me thinks I might want to hold on to it for myself. But I mean, that would be beautiful to give as a gift to uh, a little boy or a girl, actually, because it's one of those wee things that was actually unisex. So in my box, then, of all the supplies, so I've got this, the toy filler. I have... A welcome. I've got then in here the templates and the little booklet about the project and then all the bits and pieces I need to complete that project which is absolutely lovely. The fabrics there are tucked underneath. Um, so like you've got the little ribbon, you've got the little button, everything you need is included in this box and I'm really excited to make that. I think it'll be an absolutely gorgeous little product project to work on. So I got that and then I also ordered from Makebox, we'll pop that back in there, um, another little project. So this one is the Alice in Wonderland cross stitch project. Now this I think was one that came out maybe even last year because I'd seen it and meant to buy it and then forgot about it. Um, and only when I went back onto the website, I saw that they had a couple of them on the website. So again, inside the box, you get everything you need to make that finished project. And I'll show you here just what it should look like then when it's finished. There we go. So I love Alice in Wonderland and I really do enjoy my cross stitch. Now I know I have quite a few projects going at the moment, so I won't be starting that until at least one of those is complete. But yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to that. Um, I might have to actually get a proper subscription as well. I just, I haven't devoted myself to a subscription with Makebox. I do just tend to pick up the boxes that I like um, because there's so many different crafts that they offer that I can't be guaranteed. I think that, that I would love every single box, but certainly some of these project boxes I find irresistible. And so I was really delighted to pick up that wee Alice in Wonderland one as well. So I think my next project that I'm going to be doing is going back to sewing. Um, I have received some beautiful fabric from Felicity Fabrics, um, which has been gifted to me and I'm going to write a blog post for them that will be on their website in the month of April. So I'm not gonna show you the fabric because I don't want to give away too much but it's absolutely gorgeous and I cannot wait to make something with that and share that with you. And of course then being on the Jenny Stitches blogger team as well, I'm sure there'll be lots of lovely Jenny Stitches makes to share with you over the next few weeks and months as well. So yeah, there's plenty of things to work on. Um, and I'll be back with you next week to share my progress and how I am getting on. Of course, I'll be back at work next week, but I'm sure I'll still manage to squeeze in a wee bit of sewing time and yeah, I'll chat to you hopefully more about sewing for curves in the future too because I think it is important to think about the different kinds of challenges we face for different body types and my body type is defined by being curvy and short I suppose. Um, I know there are lots of other problems that you can come up against whenever you're sewing. I mean my friend Lisa is like six foot so I know she has a lot of fitting issues as well and I think sometimes we can be guilty of just thinking of plus size but really being tall or short is as difficult in terms of fitting patterns as being curvy or so there's lots of different challenges we come across and for me, being busty is 
a big one so that becomes an issue too. I have to say do you know what I haven't started yet because I got distracted by those pattern tests I haven't started making my Audrey cigarette pants yet so maybe that needs to be escalated up the list for the next week or two um, and made a priority but I do want to get my blog post written for Felicity Fabrics first and then potentially the next thing I'll move on to then is that and I'll be sharing with you my own issues of trying to fit for my lower body because you've seen my style. I do tend to wear a lot of dresses and full skirts and things like that. So we'll see, we'll see how I go. But I will be back anyhow at some point next week, if not earlier than Sunday, definitely on Sunday. So until then, thank you again for stopping by. If you subscribe to my channel, thank you so much. It's really lovely to have you here. And if you haven't, please do think about joining, hit the subscribe button below and the little notification bell, which will tell you when I have next posted a video. So yeah, really chuffed that so many of you are following on here. And yeah, if you're over on Instagram, by the way, Add me over there so I can find you and see your makes because what I have noticed from a lot of you guys who are subscribing is that you're not all making videos, you're not vlogging, but if you do have Instagram um, handles, I would even love to be able to go and see what you're up to over there. So add me and send me a message over on Instagram and uh, yeah, it'll be nice to find you. So have a fantastic rest of your Sunday, whatever you're up to, and I look forward to catching up again next week. Happy stitching. Bye.